Undocumented immigrants have right to own guns. Judge rules. By saying that an illegal immigrant who is not a citizen is protected by the Constitution of the United States of America, but our own citizens aren't. Okay, so what is that creating? Well, that's creating a situation of complete destabilization of our country because if some laws apply to some people and some laws apply to other people, how do we know which laws apply to which people? Which creates a lawless society and a selective prosecution environment for the government, which means they can come to your door for any reason whatsoever because everybody will be breaking the law and they will say, it's okay that you, it's okay that you did it. It's okay that you did it. You're going to jail. And that's what we'll end up with. And that's what we're going to end up with. What is up, guys? It's Andy for selling. This is the show for the realists saying goodbye to the lies, the fitness, and delusions of modern society. And welcome to motherfucking reality, guys. Today we have Andy and DJ Cruise the motherfucking internet. That's what we're going to do. We're going to cruise the internet. That's what CTI stands for. It stands for cruise the internet. It's where we put topics up on the screen over here. We talk about what's going on. We speculate on what's true, what's not true. And then we talk about how we, the people, need to be the solution to what's going on in the world, all right? Other times, we're going to have other sorts of shows, shows within the show, so to speak, all right? We have Q&AF, that's where you submit questions and we give you the answers. Now, you can submit your questions a couple different ways. The first way is... Guys, you can email those questions into askandy at andyforsella.com. Or you go on YouTube right there on the Q&AF episode and drop your question in the comments. And we'll get some from there as well. Other times, we're going to have real talk. Real talk's just 5, 20 minutes of me giving you some real talk. And then we have 75 Hard Verses. That's where people who have completed the 75 Hard program uh, come on the show. We talk about how their life was before, how their life is now, how they took control of their dumpster fire and turn it into a, a success story and how you could do the same. All right? If you're interested in the 75 Hard program, which is the initial phase of the Live Hard program, you can get it for free at episode 208 um, on the audio feed. It's not on YouTube. That was before we started doing YouTube. So go get it for free. If you want the book, there's a book called The Book on Mental Toughness available on my website, andyforsella.com, which outlines the entire Live Hard program, plus 10 chapters on uh, mental toughness, how to cultivate it, why it's important, why you need it, what it can do for you, and then a bunch of case studies on very famous people and how they use mental toughness to uh, make themselves famous so that you would enjoy reading about them. So uh, we have this thing on the show we call the fee. When we say pay the fee, that means share the show, all right? You're going to notice we don't run ads on the show. We're probably the only podcast of any significant size in the world that doesn't take outside ad revenue money. I pay for the show myself um, because I don't want to be told what to do and what not to do by some other people who are paying me to say some shit about their product, which I probably don't even fucking use in the first place. So I avoid that whole thing. I fund the show myself. Um, and I ask very simply that, you know, you do your part, all right? We talk about real shit on the show. We get shadow banned and throttled and censored as hard as anybody else out there, uh, probably harder than most people out there. And we don't get the word out unless you share the show. So, um, in exchange for not filling your ears full of 30 minutes of ads per episode, I ask that you please share the show. And that's what we mean when we say pay the fee. So uh, don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. What's up? Man, I got a little nervous right there at the start. What? Fucking, you know, Joe reached in his book bag real quick. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah, you man. You thought we were having another, <laughs> hey. another shoot, school shooting? <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah. We cool, Joe. You yeah. know what I'm <laughs> Like, shit. Joe's finally had enough. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the day that Joe snapped. <laughs> yeah no man what's going on though nothing dude just uh doing the thing mm -hmm. what's up with you no not much man you know you know just getting it done yeah little, little wednesday release action yeah 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 we uh we went to record an episode yesterday it just didn't go very well i was in a mood mm. we'll just leave it at that yeah all right yeah it wasn't worth releasing with it, the mood I was in. It probably would have set the world on fire. Yeah, it was. It was just wasn't good. Yeah. Oh, um, I thought that was great. Some, yeah, probably, <laughs> people probably would have loved it. It's just, I wouldn't have loved it. It's fair. You know? It happens, man. Um, 
But look, I get tired of talking about some of this shit sometimes. And like some of this shit's so ridiculous that it's like, what what are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Like common sense has completely left the building. Yeah. And we're dealing with so, what I think really isn't a lot of it isn't even real. You know, we're dealing with the propagation and the propping up of narratives that don't represent real people in real life. You don't go out in the streets and see all this crazy shit for the most part um, in terms of the social initiatives and the political correctness and the, uh, you know, all the shit that's shoved down our throats every day. The division, you don't you don't walk down the street and feel the division. Uh, you see that in little bitty areas across the country. But in reality, most people are cool. And like, I want people to be cool. People want to be cool. And I'm kind of tired of talking about the uncool people. And sometimes I get to a point where I think we should do something about the uncool people. And I might say things mm-hmm. that I probably shouldn't say in public. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened yesterday. Yeah. Only in taverns. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Oh, cool, man. That's all good. Well, a little Wednesday action for you guys. Hope you guys are having a great week. Um, it is CTI. Let's get to some of our headlines. But first, I wanted to check in. You made a prediction about two weeks ago when this uh, announcement came out um, about the uh, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we talked about that. Guys, go ch- check that episode out right here. Go check that out. Um, but the prediction that you made, or I guess kind of like foreshadowing you made, you said that Jake Paul needed to be careful about poking the fucking beast. Mm-hmm. Well, he's poking the beast. Mm-hmm. He's poking it. Is he? Now, I don't know if this is just like, you know, the pre-fight, you know, drama build yep. up. You know, but like in appearance, he, he doesn't, he, he's poking it, right? Let's dive into this a little bit. A couple things have come out about the Mike Tyson fight. Um, so the purse is now out. They've released that. Um, so Jake's saying that he, he, he believes that it's going to make about $300 million, which if, if that happens, that's fucking insane. Right, like for one single fight event, you know, almost half a billion dollars, man. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and uh, we know that it's set to be um, uh, the fight in July twentieth at the AT and T Stadium in Texas. It's gonna be aired on Netflix exclusively, uh, according to UFC legend Henry Cejudo. Um, Tyson is uh, set to pocket a cool twenty million dollars off of this fight. Um, Cejudo, who dropped the decision to Marab Davashilvi. Uh, at last month's UFC 298, made the claim on his podcast with Kamaru Usman. Um, you know, now, when Tyson fought Roy Jones, uh, Roy Jones Jr., uh, he reportedly made about $10 million off of that fight. So we're almost about double of that. Um, you know, but this poking the beast thing. So Tyson put out another workout video. I'm not sure if you've seen this one. I have a clip here. He put this video out. Here's a clip. Day three, you still want to fuck with me? So he puts that 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 post out, puts that video out, uh, to which Jake Paul then retweeted that video um, with the comment saying, "Yes, yes, I do." <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't, bro. Bro, he's selling the fight. Is that which what it is? is? Yeah, which is, what, this is just pre-drama these, shit, right? Listen, these guys are showmen. Mm-hmm. Real this talk. part of it. Yeah, it's all good. Okay. Yeah. When does it cross the line? When whatever they've agreed to, <laughs> um, and they get in the ring, uh-huh. and Jake hits Mike Tyson with something that doesn't feel what they agreed to, I believe that things will change. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I believe. Do you think that's going to happen? You know, look, dude, Jake's not some sort of bitch, okay? Right. Like, no. people fucking talk all this shit about Jake like he's, like, just some, like, the guy's big, he's strong, he's fast, he works his fucking ass off, he's a real athlete. I've said this every single time he's fought, and every single time he's fought, he's proven that that's the case. So, you know, I, I think there's some respect that should be given mm-hmm. to what he's been able to do and what he's doing and the kind of person that he is. Uh, but we're talking about probably the scariest dude ever that's ever boxed in the sport. You mean history you're invoking fucking yeah, nightmare. And the reason he's scary isn't because he's so fast and so good. I mean, the guy's old. The reason that he's fucking scary is because he's mentally fucking out there. And I think whatever negotiations or whatever, you know, hey, bro, we're selling the fight. It's all good, man. Mm-hmm. You know, like all that shit. 
goes out the window the minute that Jake, who's a strong dude, puts one on this yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, we say 80%. And motherfuckers yeah. go 81. Yeah, dude. And, like, I yeah. don't know. You know, I don't know. Like, Jake moves good, too. Jake's strong, too. But, you know, Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. And he looks like Mike Tyson. He doesn't look that much different than when he was 30. Yeah. So, like, yeah. you know, who knows? It's It's... You know, you got to give respect to Jake for putting this shit together because it's 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 the most anticipated entertainment event of the entire year. No question. So it's going to make a fuck ton of money. It's going to be talked about by everybody. We're talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. And it's awesome. Yeah. So I can't wait to see it. Uh, I might even try to go to it. So did you see the did you see the trailer for it? They uh, they released they uh, released Netflix released the trailer. Here it is. Yeah, I mean it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. Our CTI, uh, our, our day in the life. It's okay. Shorts are better, but it's okay. you know. I mean, I get, I get it. Good try. A if I effort. was on the team, I would have thought of something cooler. A for effort. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't got Keith. Hey. That's what it is. They ain't got Madot. They ain't got, well, I mean, yeah. they can do it without Madot, but they didn't. <laughs> Keith, <man. laughs> they need Keith. Yeah, man. This, no, this, man, this, look, dude. These guys are, this is this is cool. I think it's awesome. Did you see what this was here? In the, what? I don't know what that you is. Know, I missed it at first, but then, like, the second time I watched it, I don't know. What's he holding? What is that? A med- I don't. The I shock. Oh, that's the electromagnetic. They're getting some Rocky Four stuff. Yeah, moon gravity. Yeah. Um, but what is? But like, I don't know. Let's just move on. I don't want to go there, but like, that, let's not. It, <laughs> it's hard not to. <laughs> that's just a guy. <laughs> it, well, that, we think. I think they they say that's an assumption, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, sweet man, we'll we'll, we'll see how this. Works I mean, out, man. what do you think's gonna happen? I think Jake Paul is gonna get knocked the fuck out. I think I think he I think it'd be lights out, bro. I I think I think there's no chance. I I think that Mike Tyson I I I don't I don't know. I think I think all bets are off the minute he gets even a little bit fucking shook or stunned or fucking upset. And the quickest way to upset someone is punch him in the face. You know what I'm saying? 81 when we agreed to 80. I, I don't even think it has to be an agreement. I think whatever they say they're going to do or whatever, I don't think he fucking cares. I yeah, because let's be real. That, that look, bro, when he fight. fought, well, no, when he fought that other fight, that yeah. other dude didn't even hit him. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's like, what I'm saying. I think he was afraid to hit him the whole time because he's like, fuck, if I hit this dude, he's going to kill me. He looks, he looks frail. Yeah. Mike looks better now than he looked then, too. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Now, Jake does have a little bit of height on him. Just a little bit. Yeah. You know? So? But fuck. I, 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 and I res- listen, I respect him. I understand all of that. But, bro, Mike Tyson, bro. Mm. I don't see well, it. That's why they have the fight, man. That's why you got to watch. Yeah. yeah you know, we'll that's see. the whole game, making people talk about it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, <laughs> Which we'll nobody's see. better than that. Nobody's better about creating that than Jake Paul. Oh, yeah. No yeah. doubt. He, he's a promoter, bro. He knows how to do it. Yeah. Knows how to do it, guys. Tell us what you guys think. Place your bets down in the uh, in the in the comment section. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, with that being said, man, I, listen. I think it's incredible what the, what those guys have done. They get a lot of hate. The reality is, these are two dudes from Ohio that have fucking figured out the fucking game in a new era. They understand how to create buzz. They understand how to market. They understand how to create promo. They've created businesses out of it. They're doing very well. And the only reason that people hate on them is because they didn't do the shit that these guys are doing. That's it. Mm-hmm. So I think it's fucking cool what they do. That's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, guys, let us know down in the comments. With that being said, man, let's get into some of our cruising. Um, we got a we got a heavy topic to bring up first. I want to just get this out of the way. Let's talk about it. Uh, it's trying to make some uh, some ripples uh, throughout social media. Um and we we got to talk about it. We got to address it. Headline number one reads: Undocumented immigrants have right to own guns. Judge rules. Um, 
let's let's dive into this, man. Um, so a judge this month dropped gun charges against an illegal migrant in Illinois, sparking further debate about the rights associated with the Second Amendment. U.S. District Court Judge Sharon Coleman of the Northern District of Illinois referenced lower court rulings in dismissing firearm uh, possession charges against uh, Herberto uh, Carbajal Flores, who was illegally or unlawfully in the United States when he possessed a handgun in the Little Village neighborhood of Chicago on June 1st, 2020. Quote, the court finds that Carbajal Flores' criminal record containing no improper use of a weapon, as well as the nonviolent circumstances of his arrest, do not support a finding that he poses a risk to public safety such that he cannot be trusted to use a weapon responsibly and should be deprived of his Second Amendment right to bear arms and self-defense. Coleman, who was, an, uh, was appointed under President Barack Obama, wrote in her eight-page ruling filed March 8th. Uh, Carbajal Flores was charged under Title 18 of the U.S. Criminal Code, which legally disallows undocumented individuals to possess firearms and ammunition, quote, uh, quote or to receive any firearm and ammunition, which has been shipped or transported to uh, in interstate or foreign, to, uh, foreign commerce. Um, the defendant, who contended the firearm was possessed for self-defense and protection of property, quote, during a time of documented civil unrest, in the spring of 2020, has never been convicted of a felony, a violent crime, or a crime involving the use of a weapon. I should feel like there's a caveat here. In this country, he's never been charged or convicted of a crime in this country. Mm -hmm. what's, his, what's his criminal record where, he, where he's from? Mm -hmm. He's not here legally. That's correct. That's a criminal record to begin with. Well, apparently not. You know, and, and so the thing is, man... You know, obviously, you know, they're talking about the, the BLM, the George Floyd riots and all of that stuff um, that uh, that was going on during that time. Um, you know, and it's just interesting the amount of of birth, wide birth, I guess you can call they're trying to give these illegal aliens, um, you know, while at the same time, states are constantly trying to take away actual American citizens rights. That's right. To bear arms. Yeah. Um, you got this just coming out uh, out of Colorado. Uh, Colorado Democrat Secretary of State wants state level assault weapons bans. Yeah. Isn't that the same Secretary of State that wanted to remove Trump from the ballot? Correct. I thought so. Correct. Yeah. Um, she so this how out. about we just fucking get her out of office and stop dealing with her dumb shit? How about that? Yeah. That um, sounds good to me. It sounds great to me. You know, I support an assault weapons ban in Colorado. We can't wait for the federal government to I, act. Yeah, well, you know what? I can't wait for them to act either because that's when it's time to use the weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, and Biden's always calling it, man. And it's like, you know, the, the problem here is that this there's a dangerous precedence that's being set. Um, you know, I don't know if you saw this. Did that me up a couple spots on the list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet. At least like two. All right. Um, you know, but I don't know if you saw this, you know, Tyson Foods. They're facing a massive boycott right now um, because they just fired 1,200 Americans and then released a statement at the same time saying that they would like to employ 42,000 migrants. Yeah. Massive backlash going on right now um, with Tyson Foods, who's a massive conglomerate. They own a bunch of different meat brands, um, multinational food conglomerate. Um, and they laid off an entire town, essentially, um, in, in Iowa. Um you know, so you have this stuff going on, you know, and then and then I saw this. I'm not sure if you saw this, but Elon Musk tweeted this out um, and he has it pinned uh, to his to his Twitter page. Um, and it's already received thirty two point eight million views at the time of this show. Um, let's watch this clip. The Democrat open borders plan to entrench single party rule explained in under two minutes. One, flood the country with untold millions of illegals by land, sea and air from all over the world enough to eclipse the populations of 36 individual U.S. states so far. Two, prioritize the needs of these millions of non-citizens over the needs of the American citizen, with free flights, buses, hotels, meals, and phones, ensuring their loyalty to the political party that imported them. Three, keep them in the country at all costs, even when they commit violent crime like murder and rape. Attack the language used to describe the criminals, as opposed to the criminals themselves. Slander critics as racist. Four, 
ensure their privileges are made irrevocable with city and state sanctuary laws that act as population magnets, codify permanent status and ensure non-cooperation with ICE. 5. Count the non-citizens in the census that will determine congressional apportionment in the House of Representatives. As of now, that would equal 13 extra congressional districts. A tremendous amount of electoral power. 6. Wage a massive, heavily funded lawfare campaign to change state voting laws that legalize mass mail-in ballots, no signature verification, and no proof of citizenship requirements, making it nearly impossible to prove voter fraud. 7. Lock in the permanent voting majority with campaign promises of lavish benefits and permanent privileges, enshrining generational fealty to the Democrat Party. 8. Win elections. 9. Entrenched single-party rule has been achieved. The best part? Your tax dollars are paying for it. And it is happening. It's exactly happening. Andy, what do you got on all this? <clears throat> well, I, you know, love to tell you I told you so, but I told you so. All right? I told you guys this a few years ago. I told you that eventually these people would be here in such numbers that they would get preference in the law and that they would actually be able to squat in your home. And when you went on vacation, you would come home and there would be people in your house living there and there would be nothing you can do, which is actually happening now. We actually have cases of people in other people's homes that cannot be evicted. There was one woman up in New York I saw that. that just went viral where she tried to remove migrants from her house and they arrested her. Okay, so they are getting all the benefits. They are getting all this preference. And the reason that this is happening is because the people who disagree with it have been total fucking pussies and haven't stood up against it for years and years and years and years. And now, after all the people are here, now people are standing up and saying, oh, we don't want this. Oh, we don't like that. Well, here's a game plan, guys. Uh, you have to kind of look ahead. You kind of have to see where the tide's going, what they're actually doing, and you have to address the things before they do it, not after. Because now this is a big problem to undo. It's going to be very hard. It's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very ugly. And it's going to be a difficult thing for us to fix. So, um, yeah, everything in this is happening. Everything in this is true. This is what's going on. And it should concern you. And it should def definitely concern the inner city black communities of America who have called every single person racist, who have pointed out every single thing that the Democrat Party has been doing to them for the last 50 years, all right, and attacked every single person that's actually tried to help and wake them up and say, hey, this is what's going on. And now that you've actually woken up and these communities have started to, to figure out what's going on, they're now replacing those communities with these people. And so I would be curious how black communities feel about all of these migrants coming in and getting all the benefits that you were promised that you never got. And these people just got here fucking yesterday. And, and they have it. Yeah. So look, dude, um, you know, imagine you being so inept and so bad at running your country that not only can you not win on actual policy issues or str strategic decision making, you have to move to identity politics and emotional and name calling for years and years and years. And then when that stops working, now not only do we uh, not know what to do, we'll just go ahead and replace all the people because you know it's not us that's the problem. The people just don't want to continue to vote for us, so we'll just get new people. Mm -hmm. Like th this is the problem, and I. I'm actually glad it's happening because it's finally waking people up to what's going on. It's finally waking people up to the, the, the fact that these people in Washington, D.C. do not serve our interests as citizens in any capacity whatsoever. And when we say that two years ago, four years ago, people were like, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're, you're paranoid. You're hypervigilant. Yeah. And you know what? Had you listened to me back then, we wouldn't be here. OK, but you guys want to fucking stick your head in the sand and you want to pretend like this isn't happening and you want to pretend like, you know, uh, you want to be you like people don't even want to share information because they're afraid. They've been abused for so long, canceled for so long, called names for so long that now that this stuff is blatant in their face, they're afraid to even say anything about it because they're afraid to get called a name. These people are going to take your shit. 
Okay, they're going to take your jobs, they're going to take your careers, they're going to take your fucking houses, and there ain't going to be shit you can do about it. And you're going to wish when you come home and there's a migrant family living in your house that is armed that says, hey, get the fuck out of your own house and you can't do shit about it. You're going to wish you had stood up years ago when this was pointed out by myself and many other people. So that's where we're at. That's what I think. And, you know, when it comes to the Tyson Foods thing, um, you know, there's two lessons here. One, yeah, you shouldn't be buying shit from Tyson Foods ever again, okay? And two, uh, the American workforce is has become lazy as fuck. And the reason that this is happening is because the American workforce has unionized demanded wages that are not compatible with the actual structure of how a business operates because they don't understand the cost of goods sold, tax liabilities, all the things that go into operating a business. The average employee that is unionized believes that companies make exorbitant amounts of money and they can just pay every single person $500,000 a year to show the fuck up and not do anything. You're so, not true. No, we're in a, this is the free market. Okay. So this is a lesson for employees too. If you don't produce and you're not good, you are not guaranteed shit because, yeah, you might be able to unionize. You might be able to get a group of people to say, we demand this. But eventually, the company's going to figure out how to say, fuck these people. And they're going to put people in that will actually work for a regular wage and actually produce a good. This is free market capitalism. All of you guys who fucking hate capitalism and say this and that and this, well, that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing a company who's saying, we can't afford to pay these people. They don't produce enough. We can't afford to pay these people. They will produce enough and they'll be grateful for the opportunity. So from their perspective, that's why they're doing it. Is it right? No. But it's also not right for the American worker to demand wages that a company can't pay just so they can show up to work and not produce. So there's two sides to that coin. And, you know, there's ethical entrepreneurship and there's unethical entrepreneurship. And I think that falls into the category of unethical. But to say that the American you know, mentality around work and the entitlement around work doesn't affect these decisions. This is what you get yeah. when you demand $15, $20 minimum wage to work at fucking McDonald's. You know what McDonald's is doing? Oh, they're automating their entire store so they don't have to deal with none of you fuckers. Okay? McDonald's wasn't designed to be a fucking career. Right. It's designed to be a out of high school job or even a high school job that you use to pay, make a little money to get started in life. And you know what? For some people, it can be a career, but it's not going to be this ultra lucrative career. Th th there's a delusion in this country about what you deserve, okay? You deserve a fair exchange for the value you provide. Making a fucking cheeseburger at McDonald's is not valuable work. Hmm. Okay, this is why you have to invest in yourself. This is why you have to learn skills. This is why you have to be great. Because if you're great, you can do high value things which demand a high wage. The average person doesn't get this and their minds has been polluted by this Democrat bullshit that goes out the boundaries, outside of the boundaries of mathematical realities in business. So, you know, expect more of this. Unless, you know, Americans start to figure out but see, Americans are buying into this works perfectly because what's happening is the working class Americans are buying into the communist propaganda about, dude, you can get on universal basic income and just stay home and not work. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to take whatever that is, thinking that it's going to be livable. It's not going to be livable. You're going to starve. All right. But they've got those people said, OK, fuck it. The companies know they need workers to compete. So they're like, well, fuck it, we'll hire the migrants. So right now, people are leaving their careers and going on government assistance and government aid while the same companies are then backfilling with people who are actually going to work hard. And dude, over the course of the next 20, 30 years, that's going to create a new demographic class of people. The migrants who are working hard, they're going to earn a better place in life. They're going to become more successful. They'll become the new middle class. And the old middle class who didn't want to work for less than $20 an hour at McDonald's is going to be starving. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. We're seeing a, an exchange. A massive and, flip. Yeah, right? it's a flip. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Fuck. And dude, you know, and you can't talk to people about it because they'll argue with you. 
Oh, well, you don't fucking think that somebody should be making twenty dollars working in Mc- No, I don't. No. You're making a fucking shitty ass cheeseburger, bro. You're not conquering the world. You're not splitting an atom. You're not solving a real problem. Yeah, that's you're, the, this you're is doing the kitchen. Yeah. You're doing the bare minimum and right. you expect something livable. That's not how this works. You don't get to live by just existing, man. That's not how the fucking world works. It's never worked that way, not for a thousand fucking years. So you think that because you think that would be more fair that all of a sudden the world's going to adjust because you, this little speck of dust, thinks that it would be more fair to be this way? It's not that way. It's never going to be that way. It's never been that way in the past, and it's never going to be that way in the future. And what we have here is a very real scenario of people who are willing to work, who are willing to take jobs, and we have people who are unwilling to work and unwilling to take jobs. And in the history of Earth, the people who are willing to work and willing to take jobs are the ones that prosper and the other people starve. This is the reality of life. Yeah. It's always been that way. And here we are. It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And yeah, at the end of that video, they're correct. Your tax dollars are paying for it. So not only are you being replaced, you're paying half of your money to replace yourself and make yourself irrelevant. So sit with that for a minute because it's your fault. It's your fault for staying quiet. It's your fault for sitting there and not saying anything. It's your fault for watching this happen and never speaking up. And if you want it to change, you better start with all that shit right now because the window of our ability to fix the problem is closing and it's closing fast. And for us to fix this problem in in, in any real way for real, it's going to take like legitimately a very difficult ugly mass deportation event that will get violent because now they're letting these people have guns. You're fucking insane. And that's a whole nother conversation. Okay. So you're telling me by saying that an illegal immigrant who is not a citizen is protected by the constitution of the United States of America, but our own citizens aren't. Okay, so what is that creating? Well, that's creating a situation of complete destabilization of our country because if some laws apply to some people and some laws apply to other people, how do we know which laws apply to which people? Which creates a lawless society and a selective prosecution environment for the government, which means they can come to your door for any reason whatsoever because everybody will be breaking the law and they will say, it's okay that you... It's okay that you did it. It's okay that you did it. You're going to fucking jail. And that's what we'll end up with. And that's what we're going to end up with. Yeah. And it's kind of what we got already. And it's, it's going to get worse and worse and worse because people are too fucking afraid to stand up and say anything or demand anything. Y'all will call all these people about TikTok. You'll blow their phones up. You'll say, no, don't ban TikTok. You, you'll care about that. But what will you do for this? Oh, how many calls have you guys made to your Congress people about this? Yeah, I mean, listen, what people these people all got to go, dude. They got to go. They're setting very dangerous precedent. Yeah, and and dude, do you domino that first domino's already started, bro? Brother, do you do you think that people who are afraid to speak up have the courage to stand up against these people when they come to their neighborhoods? No, that's what I'm saying. No, yeah, they're not prepared, bro. They listen. The, the, they're not prepared. Well, here's what I can say: at the end of the day, these people will not f- up my life one fucking ounce. No, not one ounce, because I will handle my f- life and I will handle it appropriately. And all of you that are timid and you're afraid and you're meek and you're scared, when these people come to your neighborhood, you ain't gonna do shit because you think this is all fake. You think this is overblown. You think this is not coming for you. It's coming for you. And the 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 migrant the military age migrants that have come across over the last four years outnumber our military six to one. Military age males to our American military. Illegal six, migrants to six American. Six yeah, to fine. one. Six to one. And you think this isn't some this isn't a big deal? I I was watching. I was watching uh, Bill Burr Mm -hmm. last night, who I think is one of the greatest fucking comedians in the world, all right? But I watched this stand-up of his from 2015 or 16. I can't remember what it was. And he gets into his jokes right away. And the first thing he starts talking about 
is laughing about Trump because he's a racist and he wants to build a wall. Through, go watch it. It's on Netflix. It's from 2015 or 16. And I love Bill Burr. I think he's hilarious, dude. But he was he was just like everybody else. He was making fun of Trump, calling him a racist, saying, you know, this guy's a, this guy wants to build a fucking wall. What a piece of shit. Like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, really? How, how's that working out for yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. How's that working out for all you fucks who fucking busted this dude's balls and didn't allow him to do that? What, what would our... We wouldn't even be... This is why it's almost good that it's happening because now these people are realizing how fucking stupid they actually are. Yeah. You're the stupid ones. You guys who stand up and call everybody else stupid for thinking this shit is real. You're the stupid ones. Because it is real, and it is happening, and it's going to affect you, and it's going to affect your country, and most of all, it's going to affect your children. Because you're a weak person, and you fail to stand up for what's right, and now your children are going to have to f deal with it. I can't think of a bigger fucking failure than that in life. And I will look back on this time and say, you know what, bro? We may not have won. I don't know what's going to happen. We may not have won. We may not have got our way. But you and me... And our f***ing people, the real motherfuckers, we stood for the truth the entire f***ing time and did not bend on it. And I'm proud of that. Yeah, fuck But yeah. not everybody's going to be able to say that. So that's my take on it, dude. Yeah. I think it's super dangerous. And people have no idea what the fuck is going on and how bad this is going to be. And if Trump does get in, which you better pray that he f***ing does, you better f***ing pray that he does. And they start deporting these people, the same people are going to come back out and be like, look how fucking racist. No, 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 no. no. F these people. They don't belong here. If they really want to come here, they can leave and they can come back through the proper channels and we'll give them a big ass hug when they get here. We make sure they're not shit bags. They're not gang members. They're not criminals. They're not a cartel member. They're not a member of organized crime. They're not a, they're not a, a blight or a fucking. A liability to society. We'll give him a big hug. We'll say, welcome to America. Just like we all got when we came here. Here's a hot dog and a butt light. That's right, bro. Mm -hmm. And you can be part of our crew. Yeah. But right now, you ain't part of our crew, and you got to go back out the door and come in the right way. And people are not going to like that. No. But it needs to happen. And, it, and, and I don't even know that Trump will do it the right way because, you know, when all the pressure came out about COVID, Trump folded on it. Mm -hmm. Real talk. And I can understand because that's immense pressure. He didn't have, he was being lied to. Lots of shit. I'll give him a pass sure. there. But here's the reality. Um, this is going to take some you balls. He still continues to talk about the vaccine being a victory, which is not. So I'm not sure what I think about Trump. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he'll actually do this. It makes me scared because, like, dude, he says he's going to do a lot of shit that he didn't do. He said he's going to put Hillary in jail. He said he's going to do, you know, drain the swamp. He didn't drain the swamp. We're all dealing with it now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro, it's going to take some balls to get this done, man. It's going to take some balls. And any of those bleeding hearts, you guys are going to have to look the other way while this shit's going down. That's Cause, it? Because you won't be able to stomach it. Yeah. You won't be able to stomach yeah. well, it. Well, so I'll look stomach the other it. Way. And yeah. so will other men. Other men will stomach it too because that's what men do. Men stomach unfortunate things that they have to do to make their fucking lives okay and manageable. Yeah. And this is one of those things. It's not fun, but these people don't belong here. They're causing massive problems. They're going to turn the country into a third world country because the infrastructure of our country simply cannot support it. The, the physical and the economic infrastructure cannot support these fucking people. Okay? And bro... I still stand by what they're, I think they're pushing us intentionally towards a in an on our soil war between the migrants and the citizens. That's what I believe the big quote unquote 2024 surprise is going to be like yeah. how COVID was the 2020. 20, yeah. I think that's where we're going with this. Yeah, that'll be the, the closer pressure. I get to it. They tried it with well, they're ramping it up, bro. They tried it with the wars nobody bought on the wars mm -mm. okay they tried it with ukraine nobody wants to go to fucking ukraine they're still trying it with ukraine so they can launder more money right let's just be real <laughs> they, they tried it in the middle east all the progressive leftists turned on the people that were trying to get everybody to go to war which they weren't counting on that was a fucking disaster that's why they want to shut down tiktok right okay so now those didn't work the pandemic, remember they tried, last September, they tried to get the pandemic going again, and people were like, yeah, we're not doing that. So they're like, oh, 
that's not going to work. Okay, what will work? All right, let's just keep importing everybody and uh, let them come across, and then we'll give them guns. There's no leader coming in on a white horse to save the day. It's not happening. Not one person can fix this. You know, I had a conversation with a couple buddies of mine, and they said, well, I said, why are people do it tolerating this? Well, they lack leadership. No, the f- they don't. There's been plenty of leadership. People have refused to join up and say and share and, and even think they're relevant. So it's not a lack of leadership because you're the leader of your own little community, of your own family. And the only lack of leadership that's happening is coming from the individual, and they're refusing to lead themselves to a solution. Yeah, that's real shit, man. Guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. That being said, man, let's head over to the comments. Uh, let's check this comment out. This comes from at Peace on Earth. Uh, they say, I literally have no words for how thankful and appreciative I am that this podcast exists. This content is what I listen to during workout on repeat. Beats any garbage music. That's right, Drake. Huh? What? Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> up. <laughs> I like Drake. I'm just teasing. I like yeah. Drake. Everybody likes Drake. Yeah. Now, uh, Future's trash. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we appreciate it though, man. We we do appreciate. It. We know you guys are out there, um, but we do need to get more active, guys. Like this, this message is important. The things we talk about on the show is important. We there, wa- people there. are waiting for an organization to come along so they can join, or a leader to come through and say, "I'm starting the revolution. Join me." That's not what's going to fix the problem. What's going to fix the problem is every single individual deciding that they are the leader of their little tribe and leading their little tribe with the same messaging and the standard of living, okay? How are you living? How are you behaving? Are you falling into the narrative? Are you in the matrix? Are you a fat, uninformed, lazy, apathetic human being that doesn't contribute to anything positive and you just consume Data, consume food, consume pharmaceuticals, consume, 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 because if so, you're their fucking hero. That's what they want. So how are you living? I see a lot of people saying, I, what can I do? And then they're 350 fucking pounds. They're not making any money. They're consuming bullshit on the internet every day. They're, they're doing mindless activities. What can I do? What do you mean what can you do? You're not even doing anything. You can do a lot. Yeah, there's a lot you can do. Fix your own shit, and everybody's going to follow. The standard goes up. The standard in your household goes up. The neighbor's household goes up. The community goes up. People have been indoctrinated to believe that they are so powerless and so irrelevant that they aren't even willing or even able to recognize the own importance of their individual influence in what's going on. This is a culture war. The culture has to change for everything to change. Do you really think your 350 pound fat ass can go out and run a f-ing down the street with an AR and do anything? Bro, you can't even get to the driveway without being out of gas. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, let's quit the delusions. What can I do? Well, you could get your own shit together and start with that. That solves a lot. You could also use your voice. Have you ever thought about why they have things like political correctness and cancel culture and silent majority and all of this shit that they put out here? Oh, it's to keep you quiet. Why do they, in the censorship that's out here, why do they want to keep you quiet? Have you ever thought about that? You're over here saying, oh, it doesn't matter what I say. These motherfuckers are spending trillions of dollars to keep you quiet. To keep you from saying Why are they spending trillions of dollars to keep you quiet and you're over here saying, my words don't matter? What, what the f*** is wrong with you? You can't fucking see what's going on? They're scared to death of your words. They're scared to death of you contributing. They're scared to death of you becoming a high level, high standard, excellent human being. They are scared to death. That is why they pour all their energy into keeping you suppressed. And you can't do anything. No, my- you can you choose not to it's real shit man like, guys let's get back to this cruise head on number two head on number two reads. uh now now this is uh this is happening but there's been some updates on this so uh i'm sure everybody's seen the missouri v biden case that's going on right now we got a couple of buddies that are uh down in dc fighting the good fight right now um but there's been some some updates right so this case is all about the censorship it uncovered the Twitter files, right, of how our federal government and a few different federal agencies were intentionally p- 
putting their hands inside of these social media companies to affect and change the narratives that were going on both around COVID, uh, the elections. Uh, I mean, literally any main narrative that we have uh, as people. Um, and they were they were manipulating that. Um, so that's what the, the basis of this case is about. Um, did you see what Judge Jackson said? I did. About this shit. Yes. Holy shit. Do you have the recording? I got the recording, okay. man. Well, how about a fucking moron? So well, uh, <laughs> she got her job because she was a black woman. Let me okay? start there. So let's start no, with listen, that. that. No, listen. It, she got, that job was handed to her. There's no she no no qualifications. That's a DEI selection to the Supreme Court. One hundred percent. Okay. And then she's up here trampling over the most fundamental, basic, the first. What what if something's first? It's it's for a reason, right? The most important, fundamental constitutional right we have as Americans. She just shit all over it. Let's talk about it. Um, this headline reads: Justice Jackson ripped for worrying about the First Amendment hamstringing government. <laughs> Literally the point. It's literally the point. Let's dive into this. So social media users were shocked and slightly bemused at Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson's comments on the First Amendment Monday. The Supreme Court heard Murphy v. Missouri, a case challenging the Biden administration's alleged coordination with big tech to censor certain messages. The case stemmed from a lawsuit brought by Republican-led states, Missouri and Louisiana, that accused high-ranking government officials of working with social media companies, quote, under the guise of combating misinformation that ultimately led to censoring speech on topics that included Hunter Biden's laptop, COVID-19 origins, and the efficacy of face masks, vaccines, you name it. The, the, it should be stated before you continue, that topics included Hunter Biden's laptop. Um, that's what 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 are the topics on Hunter Biden's laptop? Mm. Oh, you mean Joe Biden taking money from China to deconstruct the United States of America? Yeah, it's the evidence that we have a compromised leader in the office of the United States of America. People don't understand that. It's deep. They think it's, oh, well, fucking Hunter Biden's doing coke. So what? But what I do care about mm -hmm. is our highest office taking money from China, and then all of a sudden, we have an invasion of illegals. We have our military equipment all over the world. We have our strategic oil at the lowest level fucking ever. We have our inflation out of control, and we have more money being printed than it's ever been hit printed in the history of this country in the last four fucking years. Uh, we have crime waves. We have we have social uh, demoralization, destabilization by letting grown men who... Uh, Dress up as women, shake their balls in front of little kids. I care about that. Yeah, I care about all that shit. That's what we want to hear. Yeah. Okay. Well, and the strategic thing is too. See, you guys that, got... that that's all part of the thing. Right. That falls into the category of Hunter Biden's laptop. Right. And the important thing behind that too is like the effects that, that had on the election because that came out right before the election, but then it was all suppressed. Huh? It was all fact check, and they tried to delete it off the internet because well, people forget that. That's what I'm saying. Like the shit like, came out in October of 2020, right? And fucking the New York Post got their shit deleted from Twitter, right? And guess who did it? Mm. Oh, the federal government. Mm. Isn't that crazy? That's what this case is about. You know, and so it's a, so it's a big deal. Um, it's a massive deal. Um, now, as the justices questioned whether the Biden administration crossed the constitutional line, Jackson appeared to suggest that such such actions can be justified. Quote, my biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the federal government in significant ways in the most important time periods, she told the lawyer representing Louisiana, Missouri and private plaintiffs. Here's the clip. Let's watch this. Justice Jackson. So my biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the government in significant ways in the most important time periods. Um, I mean, what would, what would you have the government do? I've heard you say a couple times that the government can post its own speech, but in my hypothetical, um, you know, kids, this is not safe, don't do it, um, is not going to get it done. And so I, I guess some might say that the government actually has a duty to take steps 
to protect the citizens of this country, and you seem to be suggesting that that duty cannot manifest itself in the government encouraging or even pressuring uh, platforms to take down harmful information. So can you help me? Because <laughs> I'm, really, I'm, I'm really worried about that. Um, because you've got the First Amendment operating um, in an environment of threatening circumstances from the government's perspective, and you're saying that the government can't interact with the source of th those problems. And, Your Honor, I understand that instinct, and I guess what I tell you is— that Yeah, so that's the clip now. Yo, kids, uh, don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. That's not going to work. So you know what we'll do? We'll just lie to you, and we'll just make shit up and there's nothing you can do about it. Nope. And if you point out that we're lying, fuck your Instagram, fuck your YouTube, you're fired, you're fired from your job, you're a conspiracy theorist, you belong in jail, you didn't get the vaccine, you belong in a camp, and you know what? We're doing good. Right. That's what she's saying. That's exactly what she's and saying. And we can, we, we should be able, you're hamstringing us because we can't force people through our lies and our propaganda to do what we want them to do. And when it's found out that it's not uh, the, the whole truth and they see uh, it destroys our narrative and we can't, we can't fuck with people anymore. Right. That's, that's what, what she's that's saying. What she's arguing. And, like, and like, let's be very, very clear. What are we talking about that they're, you know, the, the actual hamstringing going on? Um, like the censorship of ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine being effective therapeutics? Yeah. That was when they deleted, deleted it off the internet yes. anybody that talked about that or the hunter biden laptop or the hunter biden laptop how many lives or the vaccine how many lives were destroyed how many people died because they couldn't have access to those therapeutics how many people and, and you and and the this, this fucking lady sits up and has a nerve to say that, that they, it's hamstringing the federal government dj to do that. they knew that therapeutic worked before they didn't want the therapeutic to get out because it would destroy their state of emergency. The only way they could have a state of emergency and continue to rob and pillage the economy of the United States and to force this level of compliance was by creating a situation where there was no treatment, right. which created the state of an emergency. Well, there was a treatment that they knew about the entire time, and they are pissed because now they're being challenged to not be able to straight up censor, delete, and lie to the American public to get their way. You, this is, this is incredibly anti-American. And the biggest problem that we have here, dude, is that they're treating us like we're stupid and children. Mm -hmm. Okay, they know better. For, they know what. Listen, best for you us. fucks. No. All the shit should be on the table. Our entire government should be declassified. Every single secret, every single data point, every single fucking thing should be on the table. And then we decide as citizens what the truth actually is. And because they've been lying for so fucking long and creating a false reality for our citizens for so long and they are losing it. Now they are freaking the f out. Mm -hmm. I like what uh, our, our, our uh, Missouri Attorney General uh, Andrew Bailey, what he told Fox News Digital, um, he, he told them that Jackson was absolutely right about the First Amendment restricting the government. That's the point. He says, quote, it is hamstringing and it's supposed to. The whole purpose of the Constitution is to protect us from the government and the government exists to protect our rights. But here, the federal government is ignoring our First Amendment protections and weaponizing the federal government to silence our voices. And she's right. It limits what the federal government can and can't do. And that's a good thing, he added. Um, so the Supreme Court is going to decide whether a temporary injunction preventing the White House and executive agency officials from meeting with tech companies about moderating content can remain in place as the case is being litigated. I think it's but it's not. Go ahead. It, it, this, 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 they're, they're not they're not even talking. about. It's not these agencies just meeting with these fucking social media companies. That's not what it is. It is much deeper than that. They had a direct portal and access to these fucking agencies, to these social media platforms. Elon Musk just revealed this. Uh, Elon Musk reveals Twitter had FBI portal that auto deleted all communications after two weeks. Now, what's the problem with that? If they were doing this in the best interest of, why would they have to delete everything? They wouldn't. They would want to show people. Why would they hey, delete it? Look what we're doing for you. Why would they delete it? Because it's not in the best interest. 
and they know it's not. In There's the best something interest. sinister there. Let's let's listen to this clip from Elon Musk real quick. You know, there, there was, uh, and, and this is coming from multiple parts of the government, uh, for, from the State Department, the FBI, um, Homeland Security, uh, from really many many parts of the government. It wasn't wasn't just one arm of the government. Um, there was this FBI portal um, that auto deleted all communications after two weeks. So we actually don't know what 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 was said there. In fact, that does strike me as a FOIA violation, a Freedom of Information Act violation, um, because you shouldn't be able to delete to order delete things after two weeks. Um, there was a there's, there's a little known agency in the State Department called the Global Engagement Center, uh, which uh, most people have never heard of, uh, but they they might have been the single worst offender because uh, they uh, demanded the suspension of uh, at one point over 250,000 accounts, um, which I think all Twitter largely complied with. Um, but they they they, they, they did the, 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 the suspension demands were so broad that they accidentally demanded a suspension of a journalist on CNN and an elected Canadian politician. It was just an incredibly uh, broad sweat. It's much deeper than just fucking meetings. Andy, what do we got on this? I think you hit it perfectly, bro. That's it's it's not about they weren't advising, they weren't meeting, they weren't suggesting, they were in control fully of the censorship on all of the social media platforms. Mark Zuckerberg tried to talk about this on the Joe Rogan show. Mm -hmm. You know, Zuckerberg comes on the Rogan show and says, well, you know, the FBI called me and they said this and this and this. He didn't reveal the full extent because probably he's scared they'll put him in fucking jail. And they now are controlling our ability to say, dude, do you guys not notice which shows of mine get censored? Do you not notice that when we oh, they're still doing it? When we talk about uh, we talk about making money and kicking ass in life, you know, oh no problem. Fucking here's the traffic. Oh, talk about what's going on in the world, what these f are doing. Oh, hey, guess what? No traffic for you. And it gets worse and worse and worse. How, you know, these people are shitbags. That's the bottom line. And they have forgotten their place. They have forgotten what their role is. They have now adopted the role that they are in charge and we live in their world, which is the exact opposite. We are in charge and they live in our world. And they have forgotten that and we have forgotten that. And for us to fix that, we are going to have to remind them of that in many different ways. And that means whatever the fuck it takes. So that's what I think. All right, guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, shout out to, to It's uh, nice to Eric see Schmidt. Eric Schmidt yeah. and Andrew Bailey yeah. standing up from Missouri, two men that we both personally know who are good men, who are actually up there trying to win, trying to win this, this fight for America, and it's nice to have that, and That's I do nice. appreciate yeah, that. Shout out to those guys, man. Guys, tell us what you guys think down in the comments. Uh, with that being said, let's get over to our third and final headline, headline number three. Um, you know, just a little interesting thing that's coming out of Brazil right now. I'm not sure if you're seeing this. This headline reads, Brazil police accused Bolsonaro of fraud in vaccine records. Oh, God. <laughs> Dude, isn't it weird how, like, they're doing the exact same shit in Brazil? As they do here, bro. The exact same with, with Trump. Is it like no, it's like uh, the exact same storyline. Yeah, it's like the exact same. It's like January eighth, January sixth. Yeah, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, it's right. Fucking, it's fucking insane. Right. Yeah. So, so, so Brazil's federal police formally accused former president uh, Jair Bolsonaro of fraud on his vaccination records, opening the door to criminal charges, according to a police report seen by Reuters on Tuesday. Mm. An investigation by the Comptroller General's office had already found that Bolsonaro's vaccination records were falsified to suggest he was vaccinated against COVID-19 in Sao Paulo uh, in July of 2021 when he was not in the city. Now, police found in their report that Bolsonaro could be charged with falsifying data in the country's public health system and forming a criminal organization to evade public health rules. Uh, one of his former aides, uh, Mauro Seed, uh, who was arrested in May in the investigation and released as part of a plea bargain, who was uh, was also formally accused in the police report. Police found that Seed fraudulently obtained vaccination records for Bolsonaro and his daughter, Laura, at the request of the then president. Uh, Seed's plea bargain testimony was used as evidence against his former boss. Snitches get fucking stitches, bro. Yeah. Snitches get stitches. 
you seed. Um, Bolsonaro told Reuters that he had not taken the COVID vaccine um, or doing, done anything wrong. Quote, it's a selective investigation. I'm calm, said the former president. Uh, quote, the world knows that I didn't take the vaccine. Uh, the police said that fraudulent uh, certificates were issued, quote, to obtain undue advantages related to the evasion of sanit sanitary rules established during the pandemic period. During his tenure, Bolsonaro repeatedly downplayed the importance of immunization and social distancing measures during the pandemic, which killed more than 700,000 people in Brazil. Did, did it Did it kill 700,000 people in Brazil or did 700,000 people that died the year before and died the year before that and died the year before that die that year too. Right. And they just assigned it to something else. How many people are dying in Brazil now? Well, probably 700,000. Probably a little I bit more guess. with all the vaccines. No, I, Well, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Bro, it's so insane. Like people, people still want to argue about like when this fucking COVID shit came out, um, I don't know, a week or two ago. Uh, what was the news that came out that was the big news for the last Oh, week? you could just treat it like the flu now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, mm -hmm. When that came out. And then you had all these people starting, yeah, that's because COVID was so much stronger in the beginning. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> what, what happened to the flu during this time, genius? <laughs> Where did the flu desk? So you're telling, yeah. like, they still don't understand. Everything was made up in terms of how they were tracking. Was COVID a real thing? Was, like, were people getting sick? Yeah. But they were counting deaths with people who had COVID. And the way that they were tracking people who had COVID was by testing them with a PCR test that had a cycle rate that was abnormally high intentionally to pick up any virus strand that existed in your body, which gave a false positive test. And so these people were dying of other causes and they were being labeled as COVID deaths. That happened the entire time. Mm -hmm. There were lots of people that tried to tell you this. You didn't listen. Um, then yeah. on top of it, where did the flu go? For, so the flu just shows up and says, well, fuck COVID's here. They're going to do our work. I guess we'll be on vacation. Yeah, I'll see you guys. I'll be yeah, back. Yeah, I'll see you in a couple years. <laughs> like, bro, I don't yeah. understand how. No, no, no. I, I, listen, I have, I have a very hard time understanding how people cannot connect all that data. I, I just really, I, I, like, how? Bro, do you remember the, um, do you remember the headlines? Bro, we were connecting that data in March of 2020. Yeah. On the fucking show. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Listen, I you know what me up, bro. And I remember, I remember a headline that came out. Um, it was a medical examiner, I want to say in Michigan somewhere. He said that he had two deceased uh people come in, come into the morgue. He has to do the autopsy, and he said the farm that he got from the hospital is that you know the the suspected cause of death was COVID. Right, they two people die from COVID. They go to the fucking morgue. Right, he looks at them. Um, and then in his medical examiner report, you know, when he's going through this, he said it was very, very obvious that these two people had, in fact, died of very, very obvious gunshot wounds. These and people died deaths. from gunshot wounds, yeah. but they the hospital labeled them as covid deaths. That's now, it. why? Why would they label them as covid deaths? Oh, it's because the hospital's. And the hospital systems were getting paid up to thirty thousand dollars per uh, death that they labeled as COVID under the the same emergency authorization. Like, dude, how y'all got played? How? Yep. Well, because we were conspiracy theorists and they were smarter than us. Listen, they weaponized people virtue against them. Mm -hmm. That's what they did. They weaponized people good heart and their virtue against them. Yep. And their trusting hearts and the, who they believe. They're, the, these people, as fucking pissed off as I am about how I was treated by those people during that time, I still don't hold it against those people. Mm -hmm. Because those people have a reasonable expectation to believe that when Anthony Fauci or some other trusted medical professional goes on television and says certain things, or when a, an organization like the WHO goes on television and says certain things, okay, and when our government officials go on television and say certain things, the news, certain things, that these things should be true. Right. That is, that is a 
reasonable expectation from a person who is busy living their life, Mm -hmm. okay? So if you're living your life and you're working a job and you have kids and you have, you know, an intentionally hard economic situation from the government, meaning they oppressively tax you and make you, like we wouldn't have to work the way we have to work if our government didn't abuse us the way that we are Mm -hmm. abused. People don't think of it like that, but that's the truth. So they put these people in these crazy, stressful, hard to make ends meet situations, okay? So they're already busy with their attention trying to survive over here. And then they preyed on the trust that those people should and rightfully have a right to have from their own government Mm -hmm. and their media sources to not, you know, those people aren't going to question. They don't have the ability to sit down and look at this and connect the dots and do the work. This guy has a couple of letters on his name. You shouldn't have to dig below the surface to figure this out. Like, that's a reasonable expectation. But the problem comes in is that when people, those people, refuse to recognize that you fell for it and those people that you hate, that like like me and you and the other people who stood up the entire time and took all the fucking arrows from everyone because we were one of the very few people speaking up. Guys like Ian Smith, Tommy Vexed, a few people in the media who lost their entire, these people, there was a, there was a fucking, there was two dozen people that got their fucking lives ruined because you guys hated them and they were trying to save you. And the problem that actually comes into play here is that they are still not recognizing who the actual enemy of them is. Mm. It is not the people like me who said, don't do that. Here's the data. Here's the this. It was the, it was the fucking government, dude. And it was the media. And it was all these people that colluded against you. And now you're walking around. You're seeing all these people and fall over dead and have all these complications from vaccines. Bro, have you s- seen these vaccine posts on Instagram, dude? Like where someone, like like there's pages, mm-hmm. pages and posts, I mean, f- miles long of people who have adverse side effects. And dude, nobody's giving them any press. Nobody's talking about it. And I'm going to predict, this is going to be my, ne- and I already predicted this, but this is what's going to happen. So they're not going to be able to keep this under wraps. I think they're intentionally ignoring it right now. And then as the election gets closer, they're going to come out and be like, studies show the vaccine kills people. Oh, and by the way, Trump did it. Look, here here, here he is. Here he is bragging about it. Bro, he's been walking into that trap for three fucking years because the people around him are not as good as he thinks they are. Okay? And they're going to use that trap. That trap is coming. And Trump's walking right into it. And when they reveal data that people got this vaccine and are f-ing probably sick as fuck or have a high potential to get sick as fuck, and they actually admit that's the truth, they're going to put it all on that dude. All of it. And he's not doing himself any favors by continuing to talk about how awesome the vaccine is. Mm-hmm. Every time the dude talks about it, he gets destroyed. Bro, read the room. Like, if you want to yeah. strategic... No, seriously. Yeah. If you're on Trump's team, and I know a number of you listen to the show, okay, what the f*** are you doing? You need to come up with a f***ing story right now and come out and say, hey, they fucking fucked me. They gave me bad info. We did this, and it's them. Because I can promise you that's what's going to happen as the election comes up. And, and bro, I, it might ruin them. if I was them, that's yeah. the move I'd pull. It would ruin them. It'd ruin them, man. Yeah. Because yeah. people have short memories, dude. They don't remember the amount of pressure. They don't remember, and 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 Trump keeps talking about it. He keeps bringing it up, dude. It'll ruin them. How much you want to bet that happens? Oh, it's happening. They've already started. Like, bro, I remember when they started. Like, they did a couple of temp checks on it. You you remember that? Like, they pushed out a couple of temperature checks. Don't forget, you know, Operation Warp Speed. Trump deserves the credit. Like, they've already started doing temperature yeah. checks on the shit, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it won't be good for him. Guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, with that being said, let's get to our final segment of the show. As always, thumbs up or dumb as fuck. This is where we bring a headline up and talk about it. to get one of those two options. Um, now, I've done some dumb shit in my life. But this is pretty dumb. 
Let's get into it. Headline reads, bartender serves drink along with a slap to the face. She makes $6,000 a night. Hmm. This takes punch drink to a new level. Uh, Spring breakers in Fort Lauderdale, Florida are cramming into a local bar for shots and slaps, but it's not a bar fight. Uh, Bartender Ayana Callis, who's 26, serves her signature, quote, hurricane shots at Backyard Fort Lauderdale for $30 every night um, of the popular party season. For $30 a shot? Yeah. Okay. So she gives you a shot. So, so a, a bunch shot, of broke people. And she slaps the shit hold out on. of you. So a bunch of broke people, and they got shit going on for them, take all their f-ing money and blow it on a week of partying in Fort Lauderdale and spend $30. Bro, I wouldn't spend $30 on a fucking shot. I tell you to eat a fucking dick. <laughs> That's fucking insane. Thirty dollars a shot as well. Yeah. What you get? But it's the experience you get with it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get slap. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, she insists participants give their consent before being slapped. You want to know how this generation is so fucking <laughs> stupid? <laughs> wait till, because, wait, till, wait okay. till you see the picture. All right. Because I just you, go I, real, real quick. I want you. I want you to visualize what you think. Um, the the guy that's get- I'm visualizing Gorlock the Destroyer. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't even know who that is. That's that f- gigantic dude who says he's a woman. Oh, that's on all oh. the f- yeah yeah yeah. Mm. yeah. Is that her name? It's, her, it's a him. Name. That is a dude. That's isn't a dude. It? Yeah. Oh fuck, man. Yeah. That's such a bad picture. Yeah. Gorlock, the destroyer. <laughs> Do the roar. That's yeah. what she looks like. Uh, but she insists that participants give their consent. Bro, where you took slapped? that dude to Six Flags, bro? That dude? That motherfucker. Why would not take him to Six no, Flags? No, I'm just saying, because he'd be eating one of those turkey legs. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's what I, when I, when I see him on all the podcasts, bro, like, I see him eating like a turkey leg, you know, like a Six Flags. Oh, bro, those turkey Maybe legs one of them are fishnet good, though. outfits, you know, they wear out here in the Midwest, bro, from like the 80s. Those you know, turkey you're legs are some good. some real white trash shit. When someone shows up in like the old Jersey fishnet like mm-hmm. outfit, yeah, I like leg. Those, those turkey legs are good though. I, I like to take mine like a, get a couple of packs of the mustard. You know what I'm saying? No, bro, listen, it'll change your f-ing life. You in on that? Hell no. Yeah, I mean, you gotta try it, bro. Bro, I don't like getting my hands. I don't like getting food on my hands. No, you. I, you, I keep it in the foil wrap, I'm, bro. I'm, listen, I'm not a. F-ing, I'm not. I'm. I'm one. I'm refined. I'm listen. cushy now. You take I the used turkey to be leg. savage. Now I'm cooked. You take the turkey leg. You take yeah. the packet of mustard. You know, you go like this with it. Yeah. Bro, listen. Yeah, that's not my thing, bro. It'll change your fucking life. Yeah. It, it must be a black thing. Yeah, I don't I don't like touching. I don't like getting... Meat on your hands? I don't like getting... I like certain meat on my hands, just not that kind of meat. My own meat. <laughs> it's too late, bro. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> ah, f- who fucking cares? I don't give a shit. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Woo, buddy! Yeah! That radar work. Give me some of that meat! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Uh, but she says she makes sure, uh, make sure not to hit them hard. Uh, quote, I am 100% a performer at best, and I'm really good at making it look like I'm slapping them as hard as I can, but I'm absolutely not slapping them as hard as I can. Callous to more. Uh, Axos. Uh, prices vary depending on the alcohol and the intensity of the routine. She estimates that she sells 150 to 200 uh, shots a night. Um, the bartender didn't invent the hurricane shot, but uh, the fit server has put her own spin on the experience with her uh, acrobatic moves and wrestling style theatrics and her uh, as her alter ego, Hurricane Ayana. Uh, Callis serves the shot at Backyard Fort Lauderdale as a freelancer buying the alcohol from the bar as part of her own. And she's an entrepreneur. Hey. Capitalism. Hey. <laughs> as part of her own entertainment company, though, which uh, through which she also accepts bookings for private parties. Um, she began serving the slap shots last year uh, and quickly became a hit uh, as college students excitedly paid for the Instagrammable moment and a story to tell the next day on the beach. Um, quote, they think it's entertaining. They think it's funny. They think that it's an experience, Calix said. Um, it's really just all in good fun. Um, so here, here is a video.
30 bucks for that. So it comes it comes out of her mouth. I don't I'm not down with that. Huh? It's coming out of her mouth. I don't think I'm down with that. She like spit it out of her mouth. Oh, that's a different story. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I can say about that one. Nope. Yeah. nope. Yep. Um, you know how I know yeah. our, our the people are getting dumber? <laughs> this shit right because here. Because when I was 20 years old and mm -hmm. I went on spring break and I paid $30, I got titties in my face. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid motherfuckers are getting fucking slapped. Well, bro, have you ever, been, have you ever been DBs down in Sular? Yeah. You know, the pad, you know the paddle whooping? I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, bro. Most of the time I've been there. Mm-hmm. I knew I was there, but I don't remember I was there. That's it. I mean, that's the case for most people there, yeah. for sure. You know, I, but I used to bounce there, bro. Um, and oh, that was you. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, I used to bounce there. And, and so the bartenders, you know, they wear lingerie and shit, and they uh, walk around, serve drinks and food and stuff. But I had a thing, like, bachelors would go, like, bachelor parties and shit go there all the time, and you can get your ass spanked by one of them. Oh wow! Like bare ass, like real shit. How much? Fifty dollars? Like, no, no, like two hundred, bro. Two hundred dollars? Making some bank. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. they're even dumber here in St. Louis, huh? <laughs> it's Missouri. Shit. Yeah. But like, I was looking at the the, bro, the this clientele is some, here. This is some stupid ass simp shit, dude. <laughs> like I can't like real talk. Good for her because she's smart. Oh, she's making a killing. Yeah. But like, you, all you dudes, you are some weak ass, pussy ass, weird motherfuckers. Real talk. 100%. Yeah, six grand. Don't you agree? 100%. Oh, go, hey, Madat, let's go up and get a shot. Fuck us happy. Slap us in the face. Oh, fuck, it'd be it'd great. It'd be great. Yeah, it'd be oh, great. Hey, hold my camera. Put it on Instagram for me <laughs> so I can look like a pussy in front of everybody. <laughs> fuck. Bunch of fucking clowns, dude. Yeah. Never even seen a real life girl before. That's the first time. That's, that's, why, they, that's why they pay for this. Bro, man, Florida was lit, man. You should have seen what happened. Yeah, I, I almost touched a girl. <laughs> I did get touched, technically. <laughs> Dude, uh, they, they I, said the first time we, hurts we, a little bit. We basically <laughs> kissed because she, poor, yeah. Anyway, you had to be there. <laughs> this shit was a movie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fuck dude you guys need to grow the fuck listen yeah they don't listen I, I can't say anything I think I'm gonna marry her <laughs> <laughs> hey hey I got a great idea let's go back tonight yeah let's go again <laughs> she says she'll give me the next shot free you know dude. I think I'm in love <laughs> <laughs> idiots god dude yeah Fuck, these guys are supposed to stand up for the country. <laughs> like, fuck, we're fucked. We're fucked, man. Oh, man. We're fucked. Yeah, dumb as fuck, man. Yeah. Dumb as fuck. Yeah. All right. Y'all a bunch of clowns. Good for her, though. <laughs> yeah, hey, congrats. At least, Capitalism. Hey, at least she's not selling her butthole for $2. It's true. Give her that. It's true. At least she's getting to smack some motherfuckers. Yeah, we'll hey. Take that. Yeah, we'll take it. I mean, she might be selling her butthole. She's probably, yeah, she's probably selling it. Maybe. I don't know. Hey, diversify the income. Well, entrepreneurship. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, guys, Andy, that is all I got, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to marry her, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What's wrong with this world? <laughs> I we're over here fighting for nothing. Yeah. Fuck, dude. All right. Well, don't be a hoe. Share the show.